-hmm. so much. I know you people have missed me. Mm -hmm. I also have missed you. Mm -hmm. Not uh, not because of something bad, but now we are together again and we are going to, to move on with our program as we used to. And we are going to start with the word of visual so that God can take us through this program, through this broadcast in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We start with a word of prayer, then we see what God has has for us today. Our Heavenly Father, we come before thee this wonderful moment. We thank you, my God, my Father, because of making it possible for us to be here this wonderful moment. I thank you, my God, for giving us this opportunity. Thank you, my Father, for giving me this opportunity to teach your people your word. I thank you, my God, my Father, and I thank you, Father, and I thank you, my God, and I want you to intervene, my Heavenly Father, for your people to understand your word so that your word will help them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Because you say they shall know the truth and the truth shall set them free. Now this is the, the whole truth that I'm bringing to them that you have put it into me, my dear Heavenly Father, for them to listen and learn and know and know their rights and know where they are in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, my God, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, as we start intervening in these teachings, let your people understand in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray and believe. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, my viewers. Thank you, my viewers. Let us say hi to each other. Hi, heroes of changing life. I thank you so much, so much, so much. Even if for a period of time we've not been together, but at least now today we are together. It was because of unavoidable circumstances, but now we are together. We are back to our broadcast together, and we are going to move on with our teachings, the teachings that God has given unto us, so that we see what He has prepared for us today. And for today, we are going to learn about our. our today, I have a fresh word. I've come with a fresh word for you, and we are going to learn about. Fight for your destiny. Today is fighting for your destiny. Last time I know the, the last time we were together, we learned about going to the next level. Now we learned about going to the next level, and the other one we learned about it's not too late for your life. Now today we are being told that every problem has an expiry date. I know that one you know. You have heard people saying, you have heard preachers telling you when they preach to you, they say, every problem has an expiry date. And again, they also tell you that your problem may be lasting, but not everlasting. I've heard other preachers telling you that. Even me today, I'm also telling you that your problem may be lasting but not everlasting and again your condition is not your conclusion thank you so much my viewers thank you so much thank you so much let me ask those people who have not tuned into exodus 20 tv to tune in to, so that they can listen to the word and the word will change definitely change them and it will work for them according to how God wants it to work for them. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, my viewers. Thank you so much. I thank you so much until there. I know we are together. I know you people have tuned in. I know you have called your friend to tune in to this, pro to, to this broadcast so that you may listen and learn and know and know your rights and know what God wants from you and what God wants you to know so that he can bless you. Thank you so much, my viewers. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Then here we are being told that faith is the midst of the faith in the midst of the fire, and in the journey of life, you will go through fire, and the fire is not to destroy you, but to display the power of God. We are being told that faith in the midst of fire. Faith in the midst of fire and the, in the journey of life, you will go through a lot of a lot of fire. And the fire is not to burn you or to destroy you, but the fire is to dis to display the power of God in you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Because when we pass through a lot of fire, through fire, that is when the power of God is being displayed into our lives, and that is when. We know how big is our God and how much He's closer to us. 
until we reach there to the fire. We cannot know how close God, our God is with us and how big and mighty he is. That is when we know how God operates. As now you, you can see the, when Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were, were put in the, in, into the fire. You see, our God, our God, their God that time, our God this time, revealed to them how big and powerful he was. Because he came and uh, he came and he came and, and helped them in the fire. Now here we are being told again, some of you, because of what you are going through, it looks like you are in crisis. But I have come to announce to you that you are not in crisis, but in Christ. You, in, you, you, have, you, you can be in a situation that you see like you are in crisis, but in the real sense, you are not in crisis, you are in Christ. But you can see as if it's, it is crisis. It is not crisis, it is Christ who wants to reveal himself in you. Thank you so much, my viewers. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Until there, I know we are going together. And I know you people, you have, you people are following me closely because I'm taking you somewhere. Thank you so much, my viewers. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Follow me closely and listen to me attentively so that you may get the word that God wants you to get and it will surely help you and it will surely take you to the next level because you will know how to fight for your destiny then here we are being told that here remember and the and the king the Nebuchadnezzar say we cast three men into the fire we cast three men into the fire and I see four men, and the fourth man looks like the son of God. You see now here, as I'm telling you, they cast three people on fire. That was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They cast them in fire, and when they were in, they were in fire, Nebuchadnezzar saw the fourth man. And here that is why they are saying that the fourth man looks like, looks like the son of God. Yes, it was it was an angel that was being sent to rescue them in the fire that revealed the power of God and that revealed how close their God was with them when they were put into the fire because they did not they did not bow down to them they did not bow down to the to the uh, to the idols of, of Nebuchadnezzar that is what I'm saying that we have to pass through fire for us to see how big is our God and how close he is to us. Then here we are being told that you should be ready to fight for your, for your children, for your business, for your family, for your finances, for and for your husband in your destiny. And here again we, are being, we have been given a verse. We have been given a, a verse to read. It is Matthew 11 chapter 12. Here is Matthew 11, chapter 12, and I'm going to read it to you, and you're going to repeat it at your own time after the broadcast. You can repeat it and understand the word so that the word will set you free. Here it says, from the time, from the time John preached his message until this very day, the kingdom of, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violent attacks and violent men try to save it. From the time John, John Baptist, Baptist his message until this very day, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violent attacks and violent men say, try to save it. Here we are being told that the kingdom of God suffered violent. You have to take it by force and the kingdom of God suffered violence. Here, I, I'm here to tell you, you have a destiny, a calling, and a future. But the devil will do anything to ensure that you don't reach your destiny. And that is, and that is why you need to fight for your destiny. Yes, here you have a calling, a destiny, and a future. But the devil will do anything to ensure that you don't reach your destiny, and that it, it, and that is why you need to fight for your destiny. And you know that we are in, in a generation that wants things on a silver platter. But the Bible says in, we, we are in a generation that wants 
things in a silver platter. But the Bible says in Exodus 15, Exodus 15 verse 3, Exodus 15 verse 3 we are going to read. Exodus 15 verse 3 we are going to read what is what God is telling us about the generation that wants everything in a silver platter. Here is 15 verse 3. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. A man of war. Here we are being told the, the Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. The Lord is the Lord is a man of war. Here we are being told that the Lord is a man of war. Then we ought to be men and women of war as well in order to get to our destiny. Our God is a man of war. And a man, a man of war. Then we ought to be men and women of war as well in order to get to our destiny. Listen to me carefully. And you are going to read Exodus 15 verse 3. We are we are supposed to be men and men of men and women of war, as our God is a man of war, so that we can fight for our our destiny. Because where we are going is not is is tough. Where we are going is not easy. Is tough, and it, it, we go through a fight, and we have to win the fight so that we reach there. Because it is not easy to go there, because the devil also is watching you closely and is fighting, is fighting with your destiny. Then here we are being told that there, there are this, there are this, there, are, there are things you must fight and conquer. There are things you must fight and conquer. Take your position, take your possession, take your prosperity, take your favor, take your next level by faith. You should take them by faith. And that is why we are being told here that there are things we must fight and conquer. And again, take our possession, take our prosperity, take our favor and our next level by faith. And now we are, we are being told that and now as we we get into this battle i want to give you weapons of war as we get to this battle of fighting for our destiny i want to give you the weapons of war so that you may know how to go about fighting your destiny and reaching your destiny because without knowing how to fight for your destiny and reach to your destiny you cannot go to your destiny the devil will always block you because you don't know you don't have a know-how of how to fight for your destiny now here i'm going to give you i'm going to give you the weapons i'm going to give as we get into this i'm this battle, as we get into this battle, I want to give you the weapons of war. And number one is, number one, the first weapon is, the first weapon is in fight. The first weapon is in, we are fighting by revelation, revelation. The first weapon is fighting by revelation. And that one you are going to see it in First John. You are going to see it in 1st John chapter 5 verse 4. 1st John chapter 5 verse 4. You are going to see it there and we are going to read and see what is telling us. 1st John chapter 1st John 5 1st John 5 5 1st John 5 5 chapter 4. Here we are going to read and you are going to listen to me. Here we are, we are being told that the blind man about it was the blind man, the lame man and the paralyzed. A man was there for, for 35 years. And Jesus saw him and there, there he knew that the man had been ill for such a long time. He asked him do you want to get to well? The man answered, Sir, I have no one to, no one here to put me in the pool when water is disturbed while I'm trying to get in somebody else to get there. Jesus said to him, Get up, get up, pick your mat and walk. So here we are being told in the weapon of violent faith because God cannot move, God cannot move 
without faith. And it is impossible to please God without faith. You see now this man when he was there, uh, there at the pool, he had faith when he saw God. When he saw Jesus, he had faith and he said, he called unto him and he came to him and he asked him, do you want to get well? Then the man said yes. He want to he want to get well and his faith was very strong and that is why when he was told get up and pick up your mat and go his faith did accordingly to 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 what he wanted and he get well and he get healed thank you so much my viewers thank you so much thank you so much again here there is the weapon of violence number 2 we have the weapon of violence Weapon of violence, we are going to, to see it in Genesis 32. Genesis 32, we are going to see the weapon of violent prayer. The weapon of violent prayer is going to be seen in Genesis. Genesis 32, Genesis chapter 32, verse 26. And we are going to read, and you listen to me carefully, what is God, God is telling us. Here is, the man said, let me go, let me go, daylight is coming. I won't, I, I won't, unless you bless me. Jacob answered, let me go, daylight is coming. I won't, unless you bless me. Jacob answered. You see again here, we are, we are being shown that this man, Jacob, had a lot of, faith in, in in God and he, he struggled with the with the angel he struggled with the angel until the angel blessed him here we are being told that is a a weapon of violent prayer engage yourself in a violent prayer not just a prayer we were, we have prayed but now we are going to engage ourselves with a violent prayer and pray again Pray again, pray again and again and again, a violent prayer until something happens. Then again here we, are, we, we have a verse, again here we have a verse that is in James, James chapter 5. We have a verse that is in James chapter 5. We are going to read and see what God is telling us in James chapter 5. James chapter 5 is telling us, here it is, James chapter 5. James chapter 5, verse 16. James chapter 5, verse 16, it says, here it says, So then confess your sins, so then confess your sins, your sins to one another and pray for one another, so that you will be healed the prayer of a good person, has a powerful effect. You see here we are being told that we pray for, for each other. A prayer, we pray for each other. We confess and pray for each other. A prayer for one another so that you will be healed. A prayer of a good person has a powerful effect. We are being told that we are supposed to be to confess our sins and pray for each other because a prayer of a good person has an effect. You see also that that is what we are being told that this is a violent prayer. Here is we are talking about a violent prayer but you are going to read it on your own after the broadcast and you are going to, to see what God is telling you there. We are going to see what God is telling you properly. You, you read properly, slowly by slowly, and you are going to understand. Pray again and again for your marital status, for your business, for your own lose your blessing because it can be it can also be loosed and it can also be attained so that is why i'm teaching you because i don't want you to lose your blessing after waiting for god for some time for quite some time you know waiting is not waiting is not uh, is not something you can say is is laughing about it but waiting, you know, there are ups and downs. When you're waiting for God, there are ups and downs, ups and downs. We are in your waiting for God. There are ups and downs, and there are ups and downs, and and again, there are ups and downs, and no, no man likes to, no like, no man likes when it comes 
to wait for God because it is not, it is never easy. When you're waiting for God, it is never easy. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm teaching you these teachings so that when a blessing is coming, you don't lose it again and again you go back to waiting. You know, waiting is hectic, it's not easy. Waiting, you see like everybody is far from you. You are only left with your God because he's the only one. Who is, a, who is a true friend and the only one who cannot leave you in times of waiting and in times of wilderness. Thank you so much, my, my viewers. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Again, here we are going to the... We are going to the third weapon. The third weapon is the weapon of sacrifice. The third weapon is the weapon of sacrifice. We are going to read it in 2 Samuel. The third weapon is the weapon of sacrifice. And it is in 2 Samuel. We are going to read in 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel chapter 24. 2 Samuel chapter the burnt sacrifice in the altar. The epidemic in Israel was stopped. That is the power of the weapon of sacrifice. That is the weapon of sacrifice. So you see when sometimes we have a... We have a very big pressing issue. Sometimes you have prayed, sometimes you have prayed, prayed, prayed. You have fight by revelation. You have prayed a violent prayer and nothing is, is coming up. Then here you are supposed to go to the weapon of sacrifice. You, you put a sacrifice. Now here is when you put a sacrifice and the sacrifice will speak for you and your, your problem will, will go on, will be taken off by the sacrifice. Now again here we have Psalms. We are going to read Psalms 50 verse 5 and listen to what he's telling us about the weapon of sacrifice. Psalms verse 50, Psalms chapter 50 verse 5. He says, gather my faithful people to me, those who made a covenant with me by offering a, a sacrifice. Gather my people here we are being told that he's saying, gather my people, my faithful people to me, those who made a covenant with me by offering a sacrifice. Again, again here is about sacrifice, weapon of sacrifice in Psalms 50 verse 5. Then again we are going to, we are going to repeat it on your own. You can read it on your own the broadcast and you are going to understand it slowly by slowly what the weapon of, or the weapon of sacrifice is telling you again here we have psalms psalms 126 we have psalms 126 psalms 126 verse 5 let us hear what is telling us psalms 126 verse 5 is here let us hear what is telling us about the weapon of sacrifice psalms psalms 126 verse 5 let those who wept as they as they sow as, as they sowed their seed gather the harvest with joy. Let those who wept as they sowed their seed gather the harvest with their with gather the harvest with joy. Let those who wept as they sowed their seed gather the harvest with joy. You are going. You are also going to read it at your free time after the broadcast, and you are going to understand what I'm teaching you about. Is all about weapon. All those verses is all about weapon of sacrifice. You are going to understand it on your own slowly by slowly, and it is, it is going to help you so much. Then again, here we are being told, sacrifice is the voice of the altar. Sacrifice. Most of the people they don't like to 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 do. To give a sacrifice but sacrifice is the voice of the altar and nothing and, and not something that and not something that you give when laughing sacrifice is the voice of the altar and it is not something that you give when laughing it is something is it, it is something that you go an extra you go an extra mile and choosing to honor God in a big way Plus, sacrifice provokes God. You see here, we are being told that sacrifice, sacrifice is the voice of the altar. 
And sacrifice is not something that you give when laughing. Because it's something that is very, you, you're painful and you, you bring, you give in something that you like most and something that you like most, you give it by pain. You give it with a lot of pain so that God can move the mountains before you. It's not something that you give when laughing, but it is something that you, you give. You go an extra mile and choosing to honor and choosing to honor God in a big way. Plus, sacrifice provokes God. It really provokes God because you have given it with a lot of pain. A lot of pain. And God, through pain, intervenes through pain. And, and God comes and moves the mountain that is before you because of the sacrifice. Here again, we are being told that say enough yeah, yeah, it's something that sacrifice provokes God. And say enough is enough and raise an altar that will fight all the altars that has been fighting with you. You raise an altar. Enough? Say enough is enough and raise an altar that will fight all the altars that has been fighting with you. There's no, there's no demonic altar that's that sacrifice can break. Here again we are being told that there is no demonic altar that sacrifice cannot break. So here we are being told that when you see you, you have prayed a lot of a lot of prayer, a lot of prayer, you have prayed with, with revelation, you have prayed a violent prayer and nothing is coming out. Nothing is moving. Your mountain is not moving. Then go for the weapon of sacrifice. All the demonic altar and all the mountains before you that are, are, are not all the mountains before you that are not moving by prayer they are going to be moved by the they are going to be moved by the by, by the sacrifice they are going to be moved by the weapon of sacrifice so here we are being told that there is no demonic altar that sacrifice cannot break so here yeah, we are being told that we remember we, we, we listen carefully that God is telling us the power of sacrifice of which a lot of people are, a lot of people here they they don't they don't do sacrifice they just pray and pray and pray until nothing is happening and they don't know how to do sacrifice that's why I'm here to teach you and to, to enlighten you about the weapon of sacrifice so that the devil will not win you and so that the devil will not will not know will not know how to go about your destiny and, des and destroy your destiny thank you so much my viewers thank you so much thank you so much i thank you so much because you are listening to me and then when you are stagnant and you are not growing spiritually know that there's something wrong and know that you have you don't know the word and you don't you have not understood the word and you have not been taught but when you are taught at least when you are taught and you know the word and you know the teachings of god properly at least you will be able to move on you're not going to be stagnant again you're going to move on and nothing will hinder you from moving to your destiny because now you will have all the teachings you will have all the bible verses that are support the, the that are is supporting the teachings you read and understand and you are when you where you have not understood you ask god to help you and to help you understand and and help you read the verses and understand understand on your own that is why when i start this program i, I always pray and tell god to intervene to intervene to my viewers and let them understand the word it is only god who can make you understand first of all 